everyone welcome to another week's video um <laughs> this is the i don't know which time i'm trying to record this video um today here in dublin it's been on and off with the rain and every time i try to start recording this video it just pours and it gets super noisy and I have to stop everything so I'll just I just hope this time it will work but if you hear some rain in the background I'll try to keep going with it <laughs> if it's not too noisy and I hope it won't be too disturbing um, so in today's video I have something super exciting to share I have these paints that I've been waiting so long to try i've been seeing them in other people's videos other artists videos they look very beautiful and i thought i was never i would never be able to get them because um these paints are the wallace and seymour vintage watercolors they are made in scotland and i only found them for sale in websites from the uk and as i live in the republic of ireland it's in the European Union um, it's either super expensive or shops just wouldn't shop here other shops completely ignore my requests for international shipping even though they said on the website that they did ship internationally so I was almost giving up on trying these paints when I found a business here in Ireland from all places called the Beara Gallery that has a stock of Wallace and Seymour paints and I was super happy that they could fulfill my order um, they don't have a website uh, at the moment I think it's under maintenance but I'm gonna leave below here their Facebook page that's how I contact them I messaged them um, asking if they had some colors I was interested in and I talked to Sue that was really nice and helpful and um, yeah, I just gave her the list of the paints that I was interested in and she came back to me and um, yeah, she sent me a link for the payment. Uh, everything went uh, well. It arrived pretty quickly uh, since it was already here in Ireland. So I'm gonna leave a link below. I know that they ship interna internationally. I'm not sure um, to which locations, but you can always ask them and yeah i cannot wait to see how they look like i haven't uh, touched them at all i was just waiting to uh, record this video for you but before we start i would like to thanks to thank everyone that have been um, following my content here uh, liking the videos commenting using the links uh, uh, subscribing it's all very helpful um, for the channel uh, my channel is very small and very recent so any help that you can uh, give it's really appreciated so if you are watching this now and you haven't subscribed yet please consider doing so like the video if you like the content and share with people that might be interested as well all of this will really help me with um, YouTube's algorithm so I can get my content seen by more people and it also gives me a little boost so I can continue making videos for you guys and um, yeah leave me your comments I'm always happy to read them and to answer them and now let's see this paint um, so I got I believe 10 colors or 11 I wanted to take advantage <laughs> since I found finally a place that would uh, sell to me I you cannot see a lot of the colors online I mean you can find in one of these um, websites in the UK but um, they're not so easy to find um, in matter of swatches and, and things like that so I'm going to put them over here I have five seven yeah I got eleven tubes so these are um, little tubes of five ml each 
which is quite small. It's more or less the size of a Daniel Smith um, um, paint tube for the most of their collection. Of course, they had some special colors that are only sold in 15 or 20 ml uh, tubes. But um, for watercolor, it's plenty. You can uh, it can last a long time, you know, unless you are painting huge uh, pieces of paper. But it's really not my case. So what I think I'm going to do now is to order them more or less in the way I want to swatch. And I'll be swatching in this uh, sketchbook I've been using uh, before. It's a Bockingford paper, 300 um, grams. It's very simple um, cellulose paper, but I really like it. It has a nice texture and I think that it will be looking, um, it will be matching really nicely the style of these paints. Um, I know that some of them um, are very light and they're supposed to look very pale and natural, but uh, I wanted to get those because I thought that uh, they would look nice to paint natural subjects like, um, I don't know, eggs or maybe also butterflies. I have a video here on the channel where I'm painting butterflies using other uh, paints, which I can leave a card here. So yeah, I think for natural subjects, it's really interesting to use this type of natural colors. So I hope they won't explode on me. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. What I think I'm going to do is maybe use this palette here to swatch them. It's a little palette that I got this week on a charity shop and I think it's a lovely to store things or also to use it as a um, watercolor palette. So there's a bit of binder separation. What I usually do in these cases, I take this paper puncher and then I mix it a little bit in the tube. Oops. Well, since it already felt here on the fell here on the page, I'm going to go with it and swatch it over here. This is the Honester Green Slate. able to see well um, from this angle. I'm gonna be bringing as usual all the swatches close once I'm finished um, and they are dry so you can see better. As you can see, it's a very light, this is a very light uh, type of gray, kind of uh, green gray. And it has some texture to it. 
I'm curious to see how it will um, look when it's dry, but you can see it's very um, natural looking light tone. Now we have the Paints Gray Original, which I'm very curious. I'm gonna be mixing this one also just to avoid the binder separation. has an interesting texture, it's a bit liquid, even though I mixed um, with the binder, but we'll see how it looks. Well, it's a, a very unusual tone. I would never <laughs> have thought that uh, things grey would look like that. It looks like a taupe color. I wouldn't call this a grey at all. <laughs> It's a beautiful natural tone. You see here I'm doing things a bit out of order but in the end I will name them all and it will make sense. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm doing this type of um, pebble swatches as Natasha Newton used to, to do in her channel because I think that these colors are so natural organic looking that they they look nice swatched this way. Oh and I just got my finger here on the on the wet paint. Let's try and fix that. very nice and interesting. The Paints Grey Original also has some particles here. And I know that some of the Wallace and Seymour paints, um, they have this type of um, sandy particles on them, so that's what I think it is. So I'm curious when they dry as well, if they're gonna rub off or um, how they dry. Now we have uh, the Blue John that I'm super curious to see in person. They all look quite liquid for me. Um, I've never used this uh, brand of watercolors before, so it may be a characteristic of this um, vintage line. But I'm used to other uh, commercial watercolors being a bit more creamy out of the tube. It's not a bad thing, it's just something I've noticed. This is a beautiful color as well. It's I would call this as a bit of a purple gray. And it has also some particles on it. I almost feel like it's I don't know, I may be wrong, I need to let it dry, but 
sometimes it almost feel as if it's a bit sparkly like it paints with mica on them maybe it's just my impression i'll wait when when it's dry to to judge but it's a really nice color i usually prefer this type of cool grays um, more towards violet and it has beautiful texture as well I have some dry paint on my fingers from another painting I was working on and it's just going getting everywhere on the paper so I'm gonna take a pause here try <laughs> as best as I can to wash my hands as you can see here and then I'll be back so I'm back my hands are clean and I can continue <laughs> the swatching session without issues and now the next color I'm gonna swatch is the lapis ashes ultramarine ashes and let's see they all look like a bit um, they all look like there's a bit of binding separation at the top so if you are testing these I would also advise to mix them before trying otherwise you get a big blob of um, gum arabic now this one is also very liquid they all have been um they all have been very liquid but i don't think it's a problem of the binder because they dry nicely Usually when there's binder separation and you don't mix well enough, they dry a bit sticky and shiny. This is a very nice color as well. It's another type of cool gray. This one leaning more towards blue. And it has some small particles of darker blue. Well, it's named ashes, so it makes sense of having these uh, small particles in the texture. It's a really lovely color, very light and naturally looking, natural looking, rather. So far, I'm very happy with the colors I chose. I was not expecting anything super vibrant because most of them aren't um, I think that's where they are unique because they have these very natural um, looking textures it's a question of preference I love um, working with vibrant colors as well and sometimes I mix um, vibrant with more uh, muted colors like this it can give, give interesting results as well this one may be a bit more vibrant um, this is a Tillier Turquoise and it's PB36 and PV14. So it's a blue pigment mixed with a violet pigment. And this one doesn't seem to be separated, but this one actually is really dry in the tube. As you can see here, there's nothing coming out of the tube, so I think that for this one I may need to open the tube. I'll try now to use a, a small paintbrush to get the pigment out just for the swatching. going to be a small swatching for this one small swatch because it's really hard that's what she said it's really hard here inside
but fortunately as this is water color you can always use even if the color has become hard you can still dissolve it with water and apart some cases where there I know that there are some mineral pigments that once they harden they become very hard to re-wet but uh, this is not a mineral pigment this is a cobalt yeah pb36 um, i think is a cobalt and pb14 as well maybe cobalt violet if i'm not mistaken it's a very nice uh, shade of blue as well and it has some faint um, purple kind of peeking through a little bit very interesting color like I said I may need to I don't know maybe I'll open here or I'll see a way to to use this uh, paint and now we have the iron plum PR101 and PB29 ah, this looks like it's soft which is good yeah and it's really rich it looks almost black go back to my bigger brush very dark color it's almost black I would say but not quite so so it's an interesting one to use for shadows maybe or if you want to paint something in a darker color but you don't want to use black actually a purple mixture no it's a, a red pigment and a blue pigment but the red pigment is kind it's a, a nerfy tone so it gets you, what you get is this dark color that is not really a purple but it's not really a black either it's really nice I like it. Really lovely. Now we have this one that is the Caput Morton Violet. It also looks and there's a bit of binder separation on this one. can see I'm not wasting any <laughs> paint <laughs> from what I mixed here in the tube because these paints like I said were hard to get and they are not cheap they're not the most expensive paints at least not the price they were being sold in the bear, bear gallery from where I bought them but still I'm not gonna waste <laughs> any of the paints so I'm using everything and this is a really nice dark tone as well Caput Morton is a color that I'm always getting when I'm buying um, handmade watercolors because it usually has a lovely texture and sometimes it has also color separation I shared in a previous video from um, with uh, where I was um, watching Arcar Creations they also have a lovely Caput Morton 
And this one is beautiful as well. The texture. Caput Morton always has, uh, at least in my experience, every time I use it, it has some degree of texture. And this one doesn't disappoint. It's already showing over here the type of granulation. Now we have Molten Whetstone. This I have no idea how it looks like because I haven't seen it um, swatched by anyone. The tube looks more empty than for the other colors. For this one, it looks like it's a bit below. Let's see. I'm gonna put it over here. That's why I like to use this um, paper piercer. I don't know what's the name. There's another name for this, but I like to use this metal one because then you can easily clean it and you can also take the pigment out with some water. Molten Whetstone. This uh, seems to be another one of these colors that have kind of uh, particles, like a bit of a sandy uh, look to it, which is really unique, I find. And for painting natural subjects, birds or fish or stones it can look really nice I love working with texture and pattern so I really like this type of unique features of some paints and I observe now as the Caput Morton is drying that the texture is really nice I think it's the most textured uh, paper from all of the ones that I've uh, swatched so far. We, only, we have only three left and this is um, Torrid and Sandstone. And this looks a bit dry as well. Let's see if I manage to squeeze something out. Not really. So I'll try again the trick of the brush here and I hope this one won't be hard to re-wet. Yeah, um, looks like I'm being able to pull some of the pigment. I was just sniffing at the paint to see if it smelled bad or something, but it doesn't. I'll still be able to use it. This one somehow I had, I don't know, I expected it to be more like this color. It's quite on yellowish compared to the photos on the website.
can see here the difference. I'll show you close here. So we can see here the difference between the color of the paint on the paper and the color here on the label. This looks more like this paint's gray over here. But it's good to have a different tone. I wonder if this is really how this color is supposed to look like or if it went bad, but in any case it doesn't smell bad. It's just hard. And I don't know if some of you uh, have had this experience before, but paints can go bad. <laughs> and I can tell you because I had a um, Cobain uh, acrylic gouache in um, Opera Rose, I think it was. And one day I opened it to use and it smelled horrible. It smelled like rotten fish or something like that. And I had to throw it away. It was really bad. So yeah, paint can go bad. So yeah, this one, It's okay, I'm a bit disappointed, I confess, because not only because it's hard, but because it's a really different in person from what I was expecting. But I'll find a way to use it anyways. This uh, next one is called Terra Rosa. Let's hope this one is not hard. Yeah, this one is good. So I'm gonna swat, ah, so put it a bit here so you can see better these last ones. And a nice more orangey type of color this one I like it it's an earth tone but a bit on the orange side so far I haven't seen anything too similar here which is good because like I said it's hard to just go with what you see online on website or even on videos here because Sometimes also you watch in a video the color looks darker and another one it looks lighter so it's always good to see by yourself. So now we come to the last one that's um, Burnt Sienna Bagnoli. This one I saw Crixis swatching in a video and it looked really nice. I don't usually buy Burnt Sienna unless I find they have an interesting texture which was the case of this one, so I'm curious to see. Oh, it's really nice, already in the palette. Very rich.
it's a very rich uh, burn sienna i really like it so here you have it all the 11 um colors that i got from uh the Biara Gallery of the Wallace and Seymour Vintage Colors. I'm gonna let all of these dry. I'm gonna name it, and then once they are dry, I'm gonna come back and show it to you a close up. So I'm back. I've named all of the colors, and now I'm gonna be showing a close up so you can check it better. Some things I noticed is some of these colors, this one namely has a lot of texture. You can see, I don't know if you can see here. I hope you were able to hear the difference. This one feels a bit like sandpaper compared to one to this that I feel only the paper texture. Now, I don't know if it also can be a case of uh, the binder, but I think it's just the texture of the paint. This one also has a bit of the same texture. This one a bit as well. Yeah, some of them feel uh, rougher than others. This one, actually, the Torridon Sandstone, I feel even the particles coming out as I'm touching it. So, what do I think? I really like that all of the colors look different. I was a bit um, concerned that maybe it could be the case that uh, some could look too similar, which is not the case. Um, I think my favorite is definitely the Caput Morton Violet, just because of the texture. I find it really nice, but I also love the Iron Plum and Blue John as well. But all of them are nice. Um, I'm gonna try to cut these two here so I can keep uh, using them even though they've hardened. And um, yeah, the, they, all, they all look really nice and I'm happy to have uh, gotten them to have tried them and I'll be um, hoping to be using them soon for something maybe fishes I don't know we'll see but um, yeah so I hope you liked this video I hope it was interesting for you to see some of the Wallace and Seymour vintage range swatch if you want to get these colors you can uh, check online depending on your, your location you may find in an easier way for you or you can always contact the Bera gallery like I did and I hope to see you soon. Bye!